Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Jude Jacob. I'm a third year PG resident from KS Hegde Medical Academy. Today I'm going to be presenting a paper titled Comparison of Shear Wave Elastography Derived uh, Renal Parenchymal Stiffness Between Diabetics and Non-Diabetics. So uh, we we'll start with the introduction. Uh, so diabetic kidney disease is the leading cause of chronic kidney disease in the world. Can be controlled and even reversed if timely diagnosis and treatment are provided. So the problem with traditional markers is that they are less reliable in the early stages. These include albuminuria, EGFR. A biopsy would provide a definitive diagnosis, but it has its own complication and an invasive method. Ultrasound is a non-invasive, easily available and frequently used method to evaluate the kidney. Ultrasound findings, uh, the 2D findings are particularly helpful in the late stages, but in the early stages they are not very uh, um, sensitive. Uh, so, shear wave elastography uh, derived uh, cortical stiffness is one of the new methods that is used to uh, uh, assess the kidneys in its early stages. Uh, the measurements that we get are expressed in terms of pressure in kilopascals. So, this is based on the principle that the tissue stiffness uh, depends on histology, particularly the amount of fibrosis. And as the amount of fibrosis increases, the stiffness of a tissue increases. So, this is just showing the basic physics of how... Uh, uh, shear wave elastography works. So uh, using shear wave elastography, we can determine renal cortical stiffness. The advantage is that it is not affected by things such as systemic and demographic uh, parameters. Uh, also, since intrarenal uh, parenchymal fibrosis is the common fan pathway of all uh, kidney disease, uh, uh, it helps us correlate with the severity of the disease. So yeah, uh, this is uh, the aim of the study, and that is to explore how this can be how shear wave elastography derived estimates can uh, be can serve as a non-invasive biomarker. So uh, uh, we look at the aim again. It is to assess the difference in renal cortical stiffness that is measured by shear wave elastography, and to compare it between diabetics and non-diabetics. That's seen the objectives to compare it, and as a final objective, we'll also. Uh, correlate the obtained values uh, with the creatinine levels of the patient. So uh, methodology, it is a case control study that is done in our hospital and was for six months. And uh, on the basis of a study that is already done by Kokita, uh, we uh, got a sample size of 31 in each group, 31 controls and 31 cases. The inclusion criteria were all patients uh, who uh, had in the who had type 2 diabetes mellitus above the age of 18 years and the control group we tried to get uh, age and sex match uh, healthy subjects uh, uh, who do not have CKD diabetes, hypertension and cardiovascular disease. Exclusion uh, criteria included obstructive uropathy, renal malignancies, pregnancy, uncooperative patients and ectopic kidneys. So SWS performed using the C51 probe in the Philips Affinity 70 machine. So then renal cortical stiffness was measured using SWE and it was compared between the study and control groups. Finally, there is a correlation between the uh, obtained values and the uh, creatinine levels of the patient. So here we can see how uh, the SWE is used to measure uh, Young's modulus and uh, it's expressed in uh, terms of kilopascals. So this is in a control subject. Uh, so this is in a case subject where first we use 2D ultrasound to measure the kidney and then uh, shear wave elastography to measure the uh, renal cortical stiffness. Here it's mentioned. This is in the same, uh, the next picture shows it's in the same patient but on the other side. So uh, then we'll go to the results. <laughs> so these are including uh, 62 patients who was referred to uh, the ultrasound department, 31 controls, 31 cases. So if you look at the age distribution, we try to uh, a, uh, match the groups as much as possible. Most of the patients are in the group uh, 52 plan years. Also, if you look at the sex, <coughs> we try to uh, uh, match the patients again as much as possible. Uh, and uh, these values were compared using uh, Pearson chi-square test and it shows no statistical significance association. Then uh, here uh, we measured the mean kidney length between the two groups. Uh, and again, here we didn't see any statistically significant difference between the two groups and p-value uh, with p-value considered less than 0.05. Here, uh, 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 we can see the mean of the kidney width between the two groups. Again, there is no statistically significant difference between the two groups. 
Uh, if you look at the cortical echogenicity between the groups, the non adaptive uh, groups all had normal or grade 0 and uh, a few of the uh, diabetic patients had grade 1 and grade 2 renal cortical changes. So uh, coming to the main point, we are looking at the renal cortical stiffness between the two groups which we can see here the mean is much higher in the diabetic group as compared to the non-diabetic group. So the, uh, the two variables were compared uh, using uh, an uh, independent t-test and uh, in this independent t-test we found out that uh, the p-value is uh, uh, very much less than 0 0.01 which uh, shows highly uh, statistically significant difference between the two groups. And here is a Pearson correlation uh, graph between the serum creatinine and the renal cortical stiffness. Here also uh, uh, by using uh, uh, a Pearson correlation test, we found the p-values uh, were uh, 0 0.004, which was less than 0 0.01, and which shows a highly uh, positive uh, uh, statistical uh, significant correlation between the two values. So uh, to finally, to conclude, uh, we did a case control study between two groups, uh, uh, 31 in each group, uh, majority patients are 50 to 59 years. So uh, the factors we measured include kidney width, length, uh, cortical equations was then observed and graded. Uh, the SW was measured in the interpolar region. Uh, no statistical difference uh, uh, was observed between the kidney length and width as we saw before. Uh, also, uh, uh, it showed a high statistical signal association between the cortical echogenicity and the groups. The independent t-test that we used to analyze the obtained shear wave elastography uh, it showed a highly statistical difference between the two groups. So the mean in the patients with diabetes was much higher, it was 12.2 and the patients which are non-diabetic, the mean was much lower, it was about 7. So an additional objective was to see if there is any correlation between these obtained uh, uh, cortical stiffness values and the serum creatinine of our patients. So we did observe a highly statistically significant positive correlation between these patients. So based on these above findings, we can say that Shear wave elastography uh, has uh, definitely has a potential in becoming a valuable tool in the early assessment of renal status in diabetes. So this can also help to early treatment and can uh, augment its disease management. Uh, these are some of the references that I used to make these slides. Uh, I hope you all uh, enjoyed this. Uh, thank you.